Okay, we're going to be uh, doing a lesson on dividing rational expressions, which is pretty cool. Um, before I get into it though, I usually use a precursor problem like 1 half divided by 4 over 2. What I tell my students is, uh, okay, uh, what do we do? And some of them say, well, we switch the division to multiplication and we flip the reciprocal. I mean, we multiply by the reciprocal. And, yeah, that's right. And then I say, well, does anybody know why? And, you know, everybody's kind of puzzled. Then I show them why. Because I think it's uh, important to understand this because then you get into your head. So, 1 over 2 divided by 4 over 2 actually looks like this. And in math, it's illegal to have more than one denominator. In fact, you have three denominators here. And that usually sparks a joke that I hear year after year. But for some reason, I always find it funny. You know, it's like, it's illegal, Mr. Shahadi? I'm like, yes. And I said, is this expression going to be arrested? And I say, not if they do the right thing. I'm like, okay, but if they're not, they're going to get arrested. And then I kind of uh, put my hands over my eyes like this, covering my mouth as well. Uh, trying not to show that I'm laughing at the bad joke that I probably would have said if I thought about it first. But sometimes the students uh, see that I laughed and they kind of attribute it to themselves like as some sort of accomplishment, which is cute in its own right. Ah, anyways, i got to get back to this. So what I do in order to get rid of uh, three denominators is I want to create one denominator. So I multiply by its reciprocal here. But what I do in the bottom of a fraction, I have to do in the top of a fraction. This basically becomes non-existent. It's over 1, but that's capricious, it's trivial, it's arbitrary, because technically everything can be written over 1 again. Anyways, so 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 4 is 8, turns into 2 eighths, which reduces to 1 fourth. That's basically why you turn a division to a multiplication and flip it, because it's more than one denominator. Now, when we do this type of problem, my students tell, ask me, well, should I factor or should I switch it from division to multiplication? And I say, whichever way uh, is easiest for you. And that's pretty much it. And I say, get rid of the most difficult step first, which is factoring. I personally think that's it. Leave it as a division problem, just factor. But you can switch it to a multiplication, flip the reciprocal, then factor. It's your choice. So here's what I got. What can I take out of 7c squared and 7c? What can I divide both terms by? What's my GCF? It's 7c. Now when I do that, I have c subtract 1 left over. Check it. 7c times c is 7c squared. 7c times negative 1 is negative 7c. It's basically what can you divide every term by when you're doing GCF. This foils, I'm sorry, not foils, factors into two binomials. That's a negative, so it's a positive negative. c times c is c squared. What times what is negative 3 but it adds up to be 2c? That would be 3 and 1. Yeah, just leave it as a division. Put parentheses around the c plus 1 because that's all I can do with it right now. This factors to a positive and a negative. c times c is c squared. What times what is negative 8 but adds up to be negative 7? That's plus 1, negative 8. Now, if you already did the multiplication, then you have to do the factoring. If you did the factoring, then you just have to do the multiplication. So. Probably should do it in a different color. Just rewriting the steps times and since I turned the division, I multiplied by the reciprocal, division to multiplication. Mm, making sure I did everything right, which I did. Now this is my favorite step. This is the step that I absolutely love doing. Because I made something that looked terrible into something less terrible. Yeah. No c minus 8 is on the denominator. No c plus 3 is. That's one term. Can't divide by two terms. So what I got is 7c, c subtract 8, times the quantity c subtract 8, over c plus 3. And what students generally ask me is, can I uh, uh, distribute the um, numerator? And I say, no, I'll just leave it in factored form. It's easier for everybody. That's pretty much it. Because you took all that time to uh, put it in factored form, just leave it in factored form. Would I mark it wrong? Uh, I don't know. Probably not. But, yeah, that's that problem, as you can see. Not as terrible. I mean, you turn something into this, 
into that, that's like a victory, you know. It's something complicated into something slightly less complicated. That's dividing rational expressions. I'm going to work on some other stuff, but for right now, have a good day. Goodbye.